Hi, and welcome to this week's look back at the major stories that have affected the market. And we're going to start with the interest rate rises, of course. We had a raft of them last week, and we're going to look particularly at Sterling's reaction to that rise. And we had them out from EU, US, UK, just to name some of the bigger players. They all raised their rates. In fact, the UK went to 4%. British pounds certainly saw the greatest effect of these raises. Now, Sterling fell to 1.21 versus the US dollar and is still pretty much there. Now, that ended a period of a steady climb over the last two, three months. 4% may not sound bad. And in fact, last year, analysts were forecasting 5% by January 2023. And it's not that bad compared to the number of 15% that we saw back in 1991 to 19. 92. However, it's worth remembering that back then borrowing was a lot lower in terms of the absolute figure, but more important on a per individual basis. House prices, for example, have completely outstripped any other economic factors such as wages. And this means that people are more indebted than they used to be. Looking at the wider economy, London is still positioned well in terms of global business. But what about the rest of the UK? Well, the Institute for Public Policy Research, a well-recognised think tank, said early this week that outside London, especially the north of England, is fiscally barren. Only Greece, they said, has lower levels of public and private investment in terms of ranking OECD countries. And in fact, if it was not for London, the UK would equal Greece in terms of economic performance. Those are quite large major statements to be made and perhaps explains why the pound saw its biggest decline of any major currency last week despite all of Europe and the US and many other countries Canada etc having interest rate rises so I think it's fair to say that the commentary around the UK being possibly in one of the worst positions globally seems to be coming true Okay, the second story we're going to look at is another economic superpower, and that's our storm clouds gathering over the Chinese stock market. There's been an awful lot of press coverage, I'm sure you, you haven't been able to avoid it, over the, the sort of last week or so with regards to the Chinese spy balloon, stroke weather balloon, stroke intelligence gathering balloon um, that was shot down over the US. And that does seem to be exasperating relations between the world's two largest economies. And in fact, as a direct result of that, the US Secretary of State Blinken's visit to China was in fact cancelled. What does this mean for the markets? Well, the financial media on one hand are saying that the positive sentiment about Chinese stocks is at a five-year high, a five-year maximum. That was CNBC that said that. But on the other hand, they're talking about the fact that traders are heavily selling these stocks. And that was coming from Bloomberg. So obviously we've got a, a confusing time going on anyway with geopolitical concerns in the world. And, and this is now further pressure on that relationship between the two major economies and these types of differing views. But what does that actually mean? Well, if we have a look at the HSI chart, that may give us some hints. And we can see an attempt at a bullish breakout of trend line. That's number one on the chart, which looks to already be failing. Then we've got breakout attempt gaps up, that's number two, which may encourage late buyers to jump on that train. Then, unfortunately, we've got a gap down at the start of the week, which pretty much trapped those buyers in, and thus is a reversal pattern, pattern forming. And that indicates that after an impressive rally of two months, where well, we've seen almost a 50% increase, are the sellers ready to act? Are the storm clouds gathering? What's going to happen in terms of the Chinese stock market? Geopolitical concerns, relationships with the US? We're just going to have to watch and wait and see. Now we're going to take a look at one of the commodity markets and one that's obviously been in focus for, for quite some period of time, and that's natural gas. And the natural gas price is near year lows. Natural gas was at $2.37 earlier this week, which is the lowest price since December 2020. Now, for some, that will be a welcome relief. But why? When we've had talk of everything that's been going on and really high gas prices and energy crisis. Well, spring is coming. Not to steal a line from a very popular TV show, we are talking about spring. And the fact that we had, by statistical standards, quite a warm winter. We're also seeing increased supply amid the geopolitical risks that we have ongoing. But they seem to be ha losing some of their influence over the gas and energy prices. We're circa about $2.43 currently, so a little bit higher than it was. Uh, many market participants, including 
people from the Fed are stating it is going to go up from here and we are going to see higher prices than we have historically for some time. But take note that whilst this is being said, these forecasts are being revised down. Now, the Energy Information Administration, the EIA, lowered its forecast for the average price in 2023 to $3.40. That was a 30% decrease on the price in the forecast it published just one month ago. And for 2024, the EIA cut its forecast by 15.8% to $4.04. Now, obviously, the current price is well below these forecasts. And whilst the downtrend seems to be continuing in the market, volumes that we are seeing are particularly high. Now, this may well be down to large market participants accumulating large long positions in expectation of reaching these average forecasts in the longer term. So welcome news it's fallen. Still seems to be an attitude that, that prices are going to remain slightly higher, but these average prices are coming down. Who knows what will happen geopolitical concerns still have an influence so it does seem to be narrowing keep your eye on natural gas is obviously quite a well driver these days and we'll look to see what happens in the coming months okay finally this week we're going to have a look at an individual equity and talk a little bit about the wider industry itself and that's after a long decline in ev stocks are they back in vogue again and this is being led by tesla no surprise there. It's been a difficult few months for EV shares without a shadow of a doubt. A lot of people saying the euphoria of fadness of these stocks has started to wane and we saw some big decreases in stock prices over the last 12 months. So what's happened? Well, <clears throat> we all know Tesla came along with the Model S. That was back in 2014 and, and became a disruptor in the market. You'd seen a few mainstream automotive manufacturers try a couple of, you know, electric vehicles, not particularly popular in that sense. But the Model S really took off, no doubt about it. It was a luxury vehicle. And they followed this up, Model Xs, and then over the last couple of years, newer models, which are becoming more and more popular, and their production numbers have been increasing significantly. In fact, this has forced traditional manufacturers to up their game in the EV sector. And they spent the last few years ramping up their, their own EV production, their, their quality, and also their marketing budgets. But that also seemed to wane slightly the back half of last year. Now, Tesla, I think it's fair to say, is a bit different. More like a, a tech stock, I suppose. And even becoming, at one point, a crypto whale without any objection or disquiet from their shareholders. But despite that, Tesla have been declining sharply, along with several other EV manufacturers following suit. Now, some of them weren't a surprise because some of them had raised billions via special purchase acquisition company or SPAC listings on the NASDAQ without even having a product in the market. So a lot of people were saying, well, this is to be expected. But Tesla now seems to be leading the rebound. In fact, on Monday, it was up 4.78% at the close and is 62% higher than it was 30 days ago. They had figures out, they were positive. Nobody can ignore that. But others are also experiencing an increase off the back of this with analysts looking at Rivian, which is a truck, electric truck manufacturer in the States, Lucid and Polestar in particular. So it does seem to be that they're coming slightly back into vogue. And of course, with Elon Musk at the head of Tesla, nobody's quite sure what's gonna happen next or which direction the company's gonna take. But certainly the start of 2023 seems to have been good to Tesla and some other EV manufacturers and certainly a lot better than the last year was. Well, that's it for this week. We wish you luck with your trading in the week ahead and I'll see you next time.